West Florida, Division II program out of the Gulf South Conference, a team that has, we talked about it in the beginning. They've had an insane amount of success. The stat that I gave right at the top here, they won the national title in 2019. They're the youngest startup program at any collegiate level to go from first season to championship title in four years. That's like the Vegas Golden Knights. What are they doing in? They doing four? Yeah. Crickets. Yeah, well, they, well, they went to, the, they went to the championship the first year. Yes, they did. They and they lost. It. Yeah. But, I mean, that's alone pretty sweet. Yeah, but this squad right here, this West Florida team, has been making a lot of noise ever since they even started the program. And they have a lot to be really excited about because uh, their second head coach in the history of the program, Coach Caleb Nobles, is taking the reins for them. Here is Coach Nobles right here. This is the man in charge of the Argonauts. Moving forward, and Coach Nobles has quite the interesting story, as in the last two years he spent on Dabo Sweeney's staff, excuse me, over at Clemson, but really the part that's interesting about him is he spent four seasons as a player and a member of the coaching staff under Pete Shinnick, who was their previous head coach. So now he plays quarterback for them, uh, coaches on the offensive side of the ball, leaves the staff to go to Clemson, get some of that great experience under his belt, and then when Coach Shinnick decided to take the job at Towson University, a Division I squad, then... Opens the door, comes back in. How you doing? Keep it moving. Coach in the building probably was the obvious decision for the Argonauts. You know what his yeah. position was at Clemson? That I can probably... Like a, he well, was offensive player development coach under head coach Dabo Sweeney. So probably some type of assistant role well, for cool. the head that's coach. That's sweet, though. Like That's the best place to be. I mean, one of the, for sure. And you talk about... Be right under him, be right by his side the whole time, listen to everything he says. I'm sure it's just it's being, about. like you said... Being around that facility, being around that caliber of a football program and learning those things from not only just Dabble, but his entire staff and that yeah. entire uh, program has to be absolutely invaluable. He spent three seasons on Shinnick's staff from, uh, I've lost it there, 2017 to 2020 as a quarterback coach for the Argonauts. He was named the co-offensive coordinator in May of 2020. He was also the director of football operations for two plus years. I mean, this guy, not only has, is he a great coach, it's proven in the quarterbacks that he's had. I don't know if you guys know the name Austin Reed. Name sounds familiar. Transferred yeah. from uh, West Florida. He was the national freshman of the year after he threw for 4,000 yards wow. and 270 yards per game to rank 13th nationally. He transfers to Western Kentucky, has an outstanding breakout year for them, the Hilltoppers, correct? Yes. And... This guy has just had quarterbacks that have been absolutely phenomenal. Now, don't get me wrong. The quarterbacks themselves, great players. But the common denominator in all of their careers and their it's success him. is this guy right here. So, a great offensive mind to be joining the Argonauts. Uh, the current quarterback for the Argonauts, Pee Wee Jarrett. We're going to talk about him in just a second. He's a guy who last year led this team to, I believe, the national semifinal. Or a quarterfinal. Yeah. Excuse me, against yeah, Ferris. Yeah. Um, and... Peewee is a talented dude as well. We've seen what he's done. He was uh, All-American coming out of junior college and now has made his mark on West Florida. Um, but, again, this guy, I guess just shout-out to Coach Nobles. We'd love to have a chance to get him on the show sometime. But this team is in, is definitely in great hands um, with his hands at the reins. They, Let's uh, talk. They also go got that, that quarterback that was going to Florida. Yes, we're going to talk got, about that him. That got in trouble. Absolutely. You know, for saying a few things. And then he's going there, too. Very interesting, especially as far as we talk about quarterbacks. So yeah. we certainly will get into talking about that here in just a second. But before we do any of that, looking at the 2022 season for the Argonauts, just wanted to pull this up real quick for us, fellas. And if you take a look back at what they did last year, look at that record right there. 12-2 and two in the conference, 6-1. and one. And some of these games, man, these scores... They certainly put the herd on teams. But we've talked a lot about Delta State here in the past. Obviously, that locker room video we posted was pretty special. They lost to them in double overtime in the regular season. And if we fast forward, we'll go to the rest of it. Fast forward, they get their revenge right here in the playoffs. Oh, when not hard to beat a good team yeah, twice. It, it is. is. That is the it absolutely game. Hard is, to beat a good man. team twice. But you look through and some really quality wins on this schedule. That loss to Delta State, obviously a tough one. But against North Greenville here, and then at number 15, West Georgia, they get pull out that victory. Uh, Mississippi College. West Alabama is a big one. And then Valdosta. Uh, Valdosta State had a down year last year. We'll talk about the standings in the Gulf South Conference here in a little bit. But a win against Valdosta is a win against Valdosta. They're still, yeah, a good, they're still, they're still a, a solid, solid program. program. Yeah, Jinx. Huh? Yeah. Well Look at it. you two. <laughs> Look at that. But moving through the rest of their schedule here, you get into the playoffs, and uh, again, you see some of these scores, and you're like, man, Limestone? 
Really good squad out of the sack last year. They were running things over there in the sack. They got into the playoffs, could not handle the offense from West Florida. And, again, part of that, too, is they get to host that game. Things get different when you go to Ferris State. You're not playing down in Florida, guys. No. That is a no. big part of the game. West side of Michigan in the winter? Disgusting. Not fun. <laughs> Wasn't it snowing that game? It was snowing. I about to say, Every I think playoff I, game? Every yeah. playoff game. I remember watching the Grand Valley Ferris yes. State. That game was ugly. <laughs> It helps Ferris so much, though. Oh, their style of play is totally designed around mm-hmm. that because Coach Anise talked about his background coaching over there in he that kind of Muskegon, Muskegon area. Yeah, play, coached at Muskegon for a bunch of years. He knows exactly how to deal with it, man. Yep. better than probably anybody else. But uh, they were also the team to stop the Cinderella Story Wingate team, who kind of barely squeaked, squeaked into the playoffs. Excuse me, they were the uh, the third team out of the SAC conference, I believe, to get into the playoffs. And they ended up making a run. They beat the one seed in their region. And we talked about that a little bit, IUP. Um, but ultimately, falling to Ferris State, we can continue to talk on uh, West Florida here. Let's talk about those quarterbacks a little bit before we need to jump into anything else. Um, or we could go. I can't think of what that kid's name is. is it I don't worry. I have it, all, I have it all pulled up. But first, I don't should worry. say before we get into all that, let's take a look at some of the facilities down there at West Florida. This is the stadium down at West Florida. By like the way, it. whoever took this shot. Um, shout out Morgan Givens, their photographer down there does a fantastic job. I wonder if this was his drone photo, but nice little stadium. Nothing too crazy. They obviously have a really good turnout for a lot of their games. I do like the building in the back of the end zone is always a good touch on these mm-hmm. uh, college football stadiums. And you is, know what I'm going to say about the field? What's that? You know what I'm going to say about the field, too? What are you going to say? The, the ultimate, lines? You like the that? Lines. You know I, I like the dude, lines. I'm we talked about it last lines. episode. We did. You're right. I'm big on the lines. Yeah, I think it looks good. Yeah. I like they're just like... And a little thing here, like their typeface, their font with like the way yeah. it has those little pieces. I don't even know how to describe that in the text. It's so like unique. If you can kind of get a good, in the end zones there, if you can get a good view at that. Am I tripping or is the way bleachers grass? Yeah, I don't know if those actually are bleachers. I think it's just a hill. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It's kind of masked by the fact there's a lot of people there, but I do believe Although, that it's just a hill. That might be better than having like just crappy stands. You know what I mean? No, I, I totally get what you mean. Because then people yeah. just know to bring chairs <laughs> just know you, like, you know like like lawn chairs i know exactly what you mean um look and i couldn't find a ton of really good pictures of the locker room but i think this one probably does the best at kind of showing it off um really nice wood lockers there um i do like how they have the mannequins with all their jersey combinations we could say some of the best jersey combinations great in small school football yeah yeah great color combination yeah i was about to say they had a good color combination i like that green and the yellow or the whoa there's no Whoa, yellow, buddy. buddy. Do we need a color wheel for you for the green <laughs> the yellow? Yeah, we need in a... the room. That's funny. Um, I do really love their jersey combinations, though. I feel like are probably some of the most unique. Uh, I'm trying to see if I had. I might have had a better picture of them on here, but I really don't. Uh, I should have been a little better prepared. But yeah, the greens. I mean, for them, I think are really sharp. They're definitely different than a lot of the things that we see. But, I think typically out of uh, out of these schools, it's a little bit of a risky color. It is, but it works. The all white looks clean. Yeah, too. that all white is nasty. Really good complimentary colors on the uh, on the all white there. And then how about the weight room for West Florida? That's, That's nice. not too bad right there. But then you also got to remember everything's so new there too because you know a what? New program. True. That is a very good point because when you start in 2019, guess when all these were made? 2019. Probably around then. Yeah, a little before or, then maybe. Or a little yeah, before 18, that. 18. But... Yeah, but still. Like, they were ready for 2019. Exactly. So when you talk about that, that's a very good point, is that a lot of these facilities are new. But I do like to highlight all the facilities of the teams uh, that we on here we have yeah. on here because uh, I think people do appreciate checking that out. But now, Jack, we can finally get into a little bit of uh, the quarterback conversation with the Argonauts. Now, Pee Wee Jarrett, he's back for uh, 2023. His 2022 stats, 33 touchdowns to eight interceptions for him. We've had him on the show Great human. Would love to get him back on here. Pee-wee's the man. 2,719 yards passing, 864 rushing last year. And you can make the argument, Kobe, he played in an extra three game. I don't give a shit. Those are playoff games against playoff teams. Those stats are hard-earned. That at least is my take on it. 151 QBR. That's really good. It, like, said, yeah, that's... it said quarterback rating on their website. I'm assuming that's the same metric. Yeah, yeah, I that's mean, what you would, you would think you would so. Think, you but would think, but... We'll go with that. We'll go with that. But, again, according to their website, right, that's that's the rating. Yeah. So, he is the incumbent, is the correct term, if we're going to get a kind of like election style on this thing. He's the incumbent at West Florida. The new kid on the block is Marcus Stokes. Am I supposed to know what incumbent means? Incumbent? It's like 
currently. Oh, he's the dude. He's the dude. Yes. Okay. So sure. like, if uh, he was the dude, and and right now he is the dude. It's saying the UP we have a we have a, a you know, House of Representatives rep, and someone's running against them. But this guy's already been in the House. He's the incumbent. He's been no, there yeah, before. He's that's been like, there. Yeah. yeah usually here in like election talk, I'm bringing it to football because why not? You know what I mean? It makes sense. More learning for you guys here. <laughs> I love it. Um, but he is the incumbent. Marcus Stokes is the one who is going to be giving him uh, potentially a run for his money. I have not seen any film of the kid. He's legit. He's obviously He's legit. a really talented quarterback. No, wasn't he a five star? So yeah, we're gonna talk about four, it right here. Yeah, UWF. Four or five. The Florida, the former Florida quarterback commitment, he's heading over to West Florida. And kind of a contro- controversial decision here for Coach Nobles. Um, he was a St. Augustine Nice High School. He was rated the number 14 quarterback prospect in the nation by one of the publications, you know, mm-hmm. during uh, entering the season. Visited UVF, um, and although I do believe he had some other potentially he had, he smaller had, he D1 committed schools. A Penn, no, he committed to Penn State originally. And then he wanted to stay home, committed to Florida, and then everything kind of hit the fan for him. Yes. So um, the controversy around Stokes committed to Florida, uh, and then in mid-November, a video service on social media, the downfall of just too many people today, it seems like. And he's singing a song in the car, Says a couple things that uh, definitely, for a man of his complexion, not supposed to say that. No. Yep. I think it's the pretty easiest way to say that, right? Yeah. And you know what? Don't get me wrong. I get shit happens, but like, don't put yourself in that situation. Exactly. Don't even let that be a possibility, right? Because now you see what happens. And the kid's life isn't over. Like, he's still no. got a chance to play a lot of really great football, and I hope he really does. But oh, I, yeah, I hope that definitely you know. squandered away an opportunity there. Mm-hmm. No, I think he. Uh... I mean, I was I saw some of his. Uh, he's got a huge following. Does he on social media? Like huge TikTok and Instagram following. And I mean, I, I saw his some name of his. was probably in headlines for a little bit there, and uh, yeah, all of that causes Billy Napier to drop his scholarship offer. Um, now he went to the same high school as Tim Tebow. Kind of a interesting fact. That's why I dropped the name, dropped the name a little bit earlier, which is kind of kind of neat. Now after the fallout, he was offered by Albany State. Um, but then they withdrew the offer because the coach learned about what happened. Albany State's actually at HBCU. That probably wasn't going to fly. <laughs> probably not. No. Probably not. I don't think so. But well, I mean, yeah. all this aside, right, when Coach Nobles was asked about this, right, and he talked about what it was like to have him on campus. He said, quote, we brought him in here. We really didn't talk much football. It was about everything that has gone on with him in the past and just making sure his apology was sincere. That's what Nobles said. So – Definitely seems like his priority is in the right place. Like, hey, we know what the hell kind of football player we're getting. We've seen the tape. We've seen yeah. what you can do with your arm, with your leg, with your brain. We've seen what you can do with all that. I need to know if the character that we're getting is good enough to put on the field and to represent this program because Coach Noble is obviously a guy that is very prideful of this West Florida Argonauts team. And you know what? He obviously felt really good about the kid that he got there because – um he said, quote, again, we feel good about the person we're getting and, more importantly, the player. Uh, and that was kind of it. I mean, it's I think you gotta make like a an serious, obvious choice. Yeah, I think you got to make a pretty good apology um, to, like, you know, almost opening day, kind of right off the rip, because everyone's going to know who you are. Yep. You don't have 100,000 followers on TikTok, and no one knows who you are, you know? Yes. So I think you got to open up with a good apology and, you know, hope that you can earn some trust back. Absolutely. With everybody on the team. Yeah, absolutely. So um, definitely interesting there. And that will be, you know, maybe he doesn't come in and challenge Pee Wee for the job right away. Like we, we don't have, you know, we don't know. We don't know what's going on down there. Pee Wee's no. the guy for them. Like he is the guy. It would take definitely a lot, a lot of motion down there to usurp him from uh, the throne that is the starting quarterback. But he's sure. also going to be a freshman. So yes, I believe so. It, right. It was probably going to, it's probably good for him to learn under Pee Wee for a year because he has one year left, right? I do believe so. I think this yeah. is the last, I yeah. want to say. So, no, it's a great point. I mean, that's like bringing in a rookie, right? Yeah, exactly. Have him learn under the vet. Pretty cool stuff. Um, now, moving on for them. Other key contributors, especially on the offensive side of the ball. 2022 leading rusher, Shamari Mason. He's not coming back. He's in the portal. Their other primary back, Ravion Hargrove, he's now at Texas A&M Com- uh, Commerce. Excuse me. You lose your two starting rushers last year out of that backfield. That's kind of a big blow for these guys. 
And don't get me wrong, this offense, as high powered as they are, they're gonna find somebody else to get back exactly. there and just hope the exact damn rock. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they gotta have. I love it. They love gotta it. have. You don't have West Florida, and you're that good. I think you can recruit some running backs. Absolutely. I'm we already have find. some on your roster too. That also is actually a very good point. Like, and we know they've gone to the portal a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the say, teams yeah, that they've got. Uh, some of the teams, excuse me. Some of the players they got out of the portal. But when you talk about pure production, though, and like pure workload, I think at the running back position is very important. And again, I'm biased. I'm a running back, but I look at this stuff. Mason, Shamari Mason had 152 carries last year. Hargrove, 101 carries. There's one other guy over 100 carries. Who do you think it was? Pee Wee. It was Pee Wee. Had 133. Wow. Wow. I didn't. Wow. Now, don't get me wrong. He's a big frame on him. He's a durable guy. Yeah. He can take some hits, but 130. You don't want your I, I don't. Uh, what, is, what is. Do you know his height weight? I can get it to you in about three seconds. He's listed at 6'3, 245. He's a big Damn. human. He's, Pee Wee is that dude. Damn. I, when you someone you got a name, Pee Wee, I mean, you would, <laughs> think, <told> Pee-wee. <laughs> you would think that, you know, he's a smaller person. He's undersized his whole life, chip yeah, on his shoulder. Yeah, you know. Kind of no, like the, Pee-wee is a man. That's a dude. <laughs> Damn. I love that. that is, I didn't even think about like that because I already know like who he is. Yeah, I know who Pee-wee is, but that's pretty funny. I never thought about that either. <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's it's definitely going to be a big hit for them. But like I said, and like you guys said, like you're going to either A, address it in the portal, or you've probably got guys in your team that are already talented, you know, down exactly. in that roster, some younger guys who are going to fill those shoes. Um, certainly some exciting stuff for them. And we look at the Gulf South standings from last year, fellas. And, I mean, obviously West Florida is at the top of this list. If I zoom in here a little bit, throw it up on the screen for y'all. Uh, you look there, West Florida, Delta State. Those are the top dogs in the conference right now. And when you look into this year, you look at the offenses and the people who are coming back. The quarterback from Delta State was the first team uh, All-American on the College Football Network selection. Yeah, that's, those, are, those names are kind of small, fellas. I apologize for that. Uh, but when you look down that standing, some pretty good, I mean, really good competition in the front half of that conference. When you look at West Florida, Delta State, West Georgia, West Alabama, these teams have had pretty solid years. Valdosta State last year, a down year for them, but you know a team like Valdosta State does not, when they go down, they don't stay down, right? Yeah. That's one of those squads they have enough Tradition, enough history. They'll be, they'll you know, be right back, sliding their way kinda, into the playoffs here pretty soon again. I never realized, like now seeing the standings, how good this conference actually That's, I was, is. I was looking at it's it. definitely like, an underrated Valdosta conference. Just when you see the names, yeah. correct? Yeah, so I, I knew all the all names, there. but I, I never like put together. All, they're all in the same conference. That's a great point. That's a really good point. Uh, I mean, I remember when uh, we had Coach Bish on here from Texas A and M Kingsville, and like remember, I don't know if you're on that episode, but I he, was on that episode. He was so excited when he was like. Yeah, we just scheduled the game with uh, West Georgia. Like, their second game, they got yeah. out of conference. And, like, that's a big deal for them because it's a prove-it game. And when yeah. you have a name like that, West Georgia, like, if you can get an out-of-conference win like that, those are playoff points. Big Remember, he time. was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this right now. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> <he told> <laughs> It was pretty funny. I love that. And I, I wish we could, like, break news. Obviously, our, yeah. all of our episodes are recorded. They come out the next day. But um, I do remember him saying that. That was, that was pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> but... Finally, fellas, our last note on West Florida here. Some good talk today. Some real good talk today. I did want to touch on the transfer of the transfers here um, from West Florida, at least some of the ones listed. Um, we know one of them, John McMullen, the defensive lineman from Northern Michigan. Yep. He's a dog. He is. Dude is a freak of nature. Like, athletically, dog. Um, definitely, I use air quotes, undersized at a well, position, yeah. right? But when you talk about speed off the ball, you talk about hand plays, when you talk about motor, you t- all these things that make a good defensive lineman physicality, He's like He's a five-tool baseball player. Yeah, yeah. I've had to bl- I've had to block him for two years. I would say both you guys have experience on the mm. other side of said human. It's not so. fun trying to block him. No, he is he is ridiculously fast, and he just he's so quick. But then he also has power to that. Like he can beat you with so many different moves. Yeah. It's not like he favors one move over the other. Like he can bull rush you. The next play, just go right around you, and you not even touch him. Because then you have to respect and honor both. Right, exactly. and that's yeah. that's really that's a key. tough thing. Yeah. Tough thing to do is respect both things. Totally, it is really hard. And as far as some of the other transfers that they're uh, getting in here, a lot in the defensive backfield. I think you will find um, some of the mid-year transfers here. We have Justin Matthew out of Sioux Falls, and he had not the in most incredible stat line at Sioux Falls, which I'm assuming is part of the reason that he uh, got out of there and is wanting a new opportunity down at West Florida. Uh, you have Kevin Quinn, the quarterback from Georgia Military, which is interesting there. He was a freshman at Georgia Military College. 
that is going to be an interesting uh, addition to that room. So a lot of competition Dang, in that quarterback that room. That quarterback room is insane. He's 6'2", 205. He's got a decent frame on him, especially for a young kid. We talked, that's his freshman year. So now going into a sophomore, again, learning under Coach Nobles, seems like at the D2 level that might be the guy if you want to go play somewhere yeah. bigger or professionally. Yeah. Do you know anything about Georgia Military School? I don't, I don't know. Never heard of it until I just read it off this page. Yeah, I'd never heard of it either. <laughs> Are they D1, D2, I would assume? I would assume I think they're D2. They're, I, don't know. I don't think they're D2. I feel like we would have. Georgia military. I know, like, Coast Guard is, is like a D3 team, I believe. I'm well, I know. Up. What's this? The Citadel is D1. What's that? The Citadel is D1. The Citadel is D1. You're correct. They're, F- so is, they're FBS. They're group of so five. So is v- VMI. Mm, I don't Why don't know. you do a quick Google search for us right there? Um, but sure. I'll keep going down the list of some of the transfers here. Offensive lineman Joseph Stone, 6'7", 340 from Middle Tennessee State. That's a big human. Um, as far as Middle Tennessee State goes, kind of a mouth, uh, mouthful there. Shout out my boy Mitch Howell that plays there, by the way. I uh, played high school ball with him. But uh, he appeared in the final three regular season games against Charlotte, FIU, and FAU. I got so your answer. you would assume that, again, a guy that believes he wants more of an opportunity to get on the field, and that's why he's making this move to West Florida. The division of the Georgia Military School is JUCO. Wow, okay. Would have never guessed that. That would have been my last, like, military, absolutely last guess. Military Juco. school being in JUCO. It's almost like boarding school. <laughs> Isn't that what military <laughs> is? Yeah, but they're like sending him they're like send him <laughs> to JUCO. Like, is. hey, they're going to JUCO, man. You're going down there. You, you gotta, gotta be military you, on top of Juco, Juco football. Oh, those kids gotta be just that kid had to get out of there so fast. He, had to get out. <laughs> he hit the high road quickly. Oh, another uh notable transfer too. A guy that we had in the podcast, Jake Dorn from Saginaw Valley, um, the defensive end that's making yeah. his way down to West Florida. That defensive line for West Florida is well, going be to be good. Yeah. Very good. And the guy coaching them, Coach Mello from Davenport, who made his way down there as well. So hence some of these GLIAC connections you see them making their way down. How do you think those connections were facilitated? He saw these guys play. Yeah. He knows exactly what he's getting with those guys. Exactly. And they're safe picks. They're old veteran guys that have one year left apiece. Uh, man, if you've seen any of the workouts that Jake Dorn does – You'd think he would be a stunt double for Captain America. <laughs> the um, I got I got Do you know what? You got a timeline question. When did the Davenport coach go there? Do you know? That's a great question. Because I, I know I, give you a I know John that. McMullen took a visit to Davenport and then took a visit to West Florida after that. So I didn't know Ooh. that was after. I didn't that know if there was a connection. He had already made the move. Yeah, okay. No, that was, was after he already made the, the move. Connection, that's yeah. a good. That's a good. That's a, a definitely a valid, a valid point though. But I think we could. That can be it for West Florida. I mean, we we. Covered the tip. That's that's pretty good analysis. It was.